Hey guys, in this video I want to go really in depth into why your penis does not matter to women even if you have Peyronie's disease, <clears throat> which is much worse than uh, a lot of things you could uh, kind of have wrong with your penis. Um, I mean, hard to say, but Peyronie's is really, um, really devastating. It can be completely devastating and a lot of men can't even penetrate or can barely get an erection and uh, it's just uh, kind of looks horrific or it can, uh, it, it can be very bad. And it really ranges, right, from uh, mild to severe. But um, this topic is really big to me because I kind of wasted my entire 20s uh, thinking I was worthless, not having sex with women, not talking to women, and um, crying, you know. Uh, I remember crying so hard I couldn't even breathe. I remember just um, being so hopeless. And I talked to a lot of guys who are struggling with this, and I'm here to tell you that it does not matter very much at all. And you can enjoy sex with the hottest women who are nines and tens to you, you know, your personal ten. You can have sex with your personal ten even if you can barely penetrate, or even if you can't penetrate at all, okay? Um, I mean, I guess it's not sex if you, if you really, really want penetration, but you can still do other things with her. And uh, you'd be really surprised how little your penis really matters. Uh, in fact, uh, you're, you're, uh, having Peyronie's or having a small dick or having some kind of handicap, it's, it can actually be a benefit to you as far as attracting women. And I know that sounds really crazy. You know, um, if you're one of the guys with Peyronie's who's constantly checking his erections, this is going to be very odd for you to hear. But um, it comes down to this, uh, a few different things. But it comes down to mainly this idea of a handicap, uh, which comes from the handicap principle, which is an idea in mate selection created by a guy named Zahavi in the 1970s. And the idea couldn't be proved, although it's very true and very real, but because it couldn't be proved, it got forgotten about. It couldn't be proved mathematically, so it transformed into a different theory in game theory. But the handicap principle, um, it is extremely powerful, and um, especially in... Uh, success with women or pickup, and what it says is, and Zahavi uses the example of a peacock, a male peacock that has the big colorful plumes, and uh, you know the the current the model until until then had been that the peacock the male peacock uses these plumes to attract the the female like they're so beautiful the plumes say look how beautiful I am, and Zahavi said no wait that's not true, um, what the plumes actually say is uh, look at the fact that I am alive despite this handicap I have, these huge plumes that are not only heavy, limiting the male peacock, but they also attract predators. So Zahavi is saying it's actually handicaps and the overcoming of handicaps that attracts the opposite sex, the female, the females. So uh, this idea, you know, he, he kind of took too far, it kind of disappeared. But it doesn't really matter. Um, there's a very important truth contained in the handicap principle. And when it comes to pickup and game and success with women, um, it is uh, very, very heavily tied to uh, the idea of testing or shit tests, as they're called uh, in the pickup community. Um, basically, what a handicap serves as is a shit test, uh, a passing of your own shit test. It's your own built in shit test. And it's extremely powerful. So, for example, um, you know, I've, I've walked up to girls and, and opened and said hi to them and literally told them about my Peyronie's and the fact that I can't have sex or, like, my penis hurts. Or I tell them, oh, yeah, in my 20s, I couldn't have sex at all. I was actually destroyed by this. It really hurt me. And I'll tell them, like, yeah, it was a very tough life. And I cried a lot. And I'm slowly getting better. Like, I'll tell girls about this right away. Or I'll say, hey, I can't have sex, so I'm just going to talk to you. And uh, when you say that to a girl... You're presenting a test and you're passing it before she can even uh, shit test you or test you. So if you've read David Data's The Way of the Superior Man, an absolute classic, um, David Data introduces this idea of how women want to test you. Women want to test you and not only do they want to, but they find pleasure in testing you. And they find sexual pleasure in testing you. So a test could be something as simple as a woman telling you to do something or um, 
complaining about something or making fun of something about you, um, making fun of your um, any of your flaws, really. And if you reply to her in a negative way, where you and you or in a way where you deny it, or like you know, if a girl says, "Oh, you're too skinny," and you say, "Like fuck you," or "What do you mean?" or you take it too seriously, then she will not be attracted to you. Okay. But on the other hand, if you say that's right, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm going for the skeleton look or something, or, uh, you know, you just kind of say like, you just accept it and kind of have more fun with it. Uh, that is passing a test and a woman is turned on by that because it shows durability and durability is, um, related to the way you would function in a tribe and women are attracted to the way you would function in a tribe. They're not attracted to your health even. They're not attracted to even status. Women are not even attracted to status, uh, fame necessarily. Those things serve more as tokens of what I would consider, what I consider permission within the tribe. So a lot of people mix up um, power and permission. You know, people think if you have a lot of money, power, or you have a lot of muscle, you know, you look powerful, or you have a lot of influence, that somehow that makes you attractive to a woman and that it's all about power. You gotta be an alpha male, you gotta be powerful, right? You gotta be better than other men. Okay, that's not true at all. And if anything, um, a lot of those types of power are actually kind of like tokens. And um, tokens, the thing about tokens is they can be faked. And in Zahavi's paper, he talks about this, about how handicaps cannot be faked. They are what he calls honest signals. So um, I, I would say you can kind of split tokens uh, and anti-tokens. And you could say like, you know, being fat is an anti-token. You walk up to a girl, you're fat, you're funny. She's going to be like, holy shit, this guy's fat, yet he's able to surpass it emotionally. Therefore, he must be the boss. He must be very special and have a lot of permission within the tribe. Wow. There's a good reason why really attractive men struggle to get women, especially women that are just as attractive as them or more attractive. And that's because when you're a 10 out of 10 in looks as a guy, your mood has to match that. And if it doesn't, if you're a little bit moody that day, that girl is going to fucking hate you because something must be very, very wrong if you're not happy, yet you have all these tokens. You're rich, you look good, you have like a perfect physique, yet you're shy. Something must be going on that's very severe there within the tribe, within your circle, within the inner tribe in your mind. And she is going to recognize that and it's going to scare the shit out of her. So when you are a perfectionist trying to look perfect, wishing you had the perfect penis, you know, and being reactive about it in any way, um, you are becoming a liability. Not dur you're not becoming durable. So there's durability from anti-tokens and then there's liability with tokens. Now tokens are great. You know, I wear a necklace, you know, I have a bracelet. You know, I, little things like this, you know, it's fine. And they can be powerful, right? Uh, having money can be good. Looking, being healthy, it's all really important. But you can't rely on that token at all or you're going to be screwed. It's often better to utilize anti-tokens. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you don't want to get too into this, you know, uh, you know, is it a token? Is it an anti-token? What you Don't think about this too much because what really matters is your, your inner game, your voice, your eyes, and um, the energy that you are supplying to the woman. But this is a very important thing to talk about when it comes to your penis and the way you kind of view it, the way she views it. And you need to understand that a handicap is very powerful. An anti-token is very powerful and even more powerful when it's related to your sexuality. So if you bring up your sexuality right off the bat and you can kind of joke about it, uh, girls will want to fuck you or will want to be with you and will want to please you however you want, okay? If you're kind of shy about it and kind of weird about it, um, that will turn them off a lot because a girl wants a guy who is non-judgmental, a guy who is non-needy and non-judgmental, okay? You do not judge yourself. And when she sees that, she says, oh, wow, this guy doesn't judge himself despite this flaw. Therefore, he must not judge me at all. And then she feels like she can open to you. So you want to open a girl up to sexuality which is a really full body experience for a woman. It's not just about her, her pussy, you know, it's not, it's, um, it's a full body kind of thing where she has to relax into the moment. There's a book called Open Her, and that is also based on David Data's teachings or influenced by it. 
David Data talks about how you must open a woman into sexuality and open yourself, open as anything. It's kind of a, it's a very spiritual idea, but um, it's a very powerful one. So you want to accept your own body. This is pretty obvious, okay? This is all, this might be kind of obvious to you so far. But, um, so the thing about your, your penis, Peyronie's disease, having a small penis, or Peyronie's in particular, is uh, it can be, you know, it looks kind of less than perfect to you. You might think it doesn't look sexy. You might think, no, the penis looks good. Girls are attracted to it. They say they do. They say they like big dicks. They say they like this. So one of the first things in The Way of the Superior Man early on in the book, David Data talks about how what a woman says and what she really feels are completely different, okay, or can be completely different. And this is more so true um, more true than anything in relation to her preferences, her sexual preferences. Okay. So, you know, her, what she finds attractive might be based on just one guy she was with who, who allowed her to feel, um, sexual, right? So maybe she was with a guy who kind of was rough with her. So she thinks rough sex is good because that guy had permission he seemed to have permission within this tribe. He seems kind of, you know, confident. You could, you could say confident. And uh, that guy happened to like rough sex. So she's going to think rough sex equals good sex. Okay. But you can train her off that into really anything you want. You can train a girl into slow sex. Okay. Slow, gentle sex where she slowly strokes your penis, you know. And uh, you can train her on anything as long as you are following principles or the underlying principle of what makes a girl enjoy sexuality and what opens her up to sexual fulfillment. So, do not worry about what she says she likes, okay? It's about what you like. Now, you could take that too far, I understand, but in general, men who worry about this stuff need to focus on what they like and then focus on how to make that woman feel good as well. So, with Peyronie's, you obviously got to be careful. You know, um, you don't want to hurt your penis. So with her, you go, you got to go slow. All right. You can have her, um, you know, even me to this day, I do have some symptoms. I got to be a little bit careful, but I've improved so much. Um, you know, I basically am cured, but at the same time, it can be a little bit hard to fill out completely during sex. Right. So it's nice and slow. I have her give me a hand job, make her stroke very slow, make out with her. Like, yeah, baby, it feels so good. Nice and gentle, baby, feels so good. Like that, you know? It's just a nice energy. You're enjoying it. It's like, oh my God, it's amazing. You know, when you're giving each other oral sex, it's slow, it's beautiful. It's like, oh my God. You know, you're, you're completely um, open about your enjoyment of it. It's like, oh my God, this is amazing. You're beautiful, okay? It's not this like quick, like, you know, rabbit sex, like just like jam it in and pump. Okay, it's not like that, and that, that doesn't even feel good to you. You might think it feels good to you to just, like, you know, fuck her and get off, but it actually doesn't. It doesn't. The more hot girls you have sex with, the more you realize it's about context. It's about the way you evaluate and kind of uphold the experience. You could call that framing. I don't really like the word frame because it implies something kind of fake. So um, I'd, I'd say it's the way you value or evaluate the situation, the way you kind of handle it. It's very important. So again, uh, now, now let me address some, some, some common um, sticking points or problems people have with this. Um, a lot of guys think that a penis is aesthetically attractive because they think, well, a woman's vagina is aesthetically attractive. I see a picture of a pussy and, oh, I want to fuck it. So a girl must see a picture of a dick and she wants to suck it. This is actually a lie. It's, a, it's a, an illusion. So the thing is, is the penis and vagina actually are not supposed to be attractive by themselves at all. So if I take a picture of a pussy and you're attracted to that, right? And then I zoom out and the girl's overweight, rotting, unhealthy, and looks kind of like mean and fucked up and diseased, you're not gonna be attracted to that pussy anymore. So when you see that picture of a pussy, you're imagining that it belongs to a 10, okay? Your imagination is going kind of is kind of imagining that she has a good gene pool she's she has something you want she has health or whatever it is that you're attracted to but usually men are attracted to health whereas women are attracted to a man's social standing um that's what uh 
David Data would say in Enlightened Sex, though I would change it and say social permission. Um, so when a woman sees a picture of a penis, she might say, oh God, that's exciting a little bit, you know? But she's also imagining that that guy has social permission, okay? She's imagining that this guy already has sexual value. And if, she, if we could zoom out that photo and she could see a guy who was really a bad guy that she knew, like a guy who um, everybody hated, who had social defeat. He felt social de socially defeated. He was an outcast. He was shy. He was really shy and really needy and judgmental. He judged his own penis and judged other women and just hated himself that she knew. Uh, she would just want to throw up. She would not be attracted to that guy's penis at all. It's disgusting. Because his, his sperm, his DNA, is just repulsive to her. Because if she got that sperm in her, then she's impregnated with a socially defeated, uh, des destined for failure human being. Okay, so, so you might think that the penis and vagina are attractive. And you might cling to that idea, tooth and nail. A lot of guys do. They're like, no, there is such a thing as a perfect penis. You may think that, but it is an illusion. Okay, you're only trying to satisfy your own ego. And you are also, when, whenever you do this, whenever you look at your penis in the mirror, wonder how it looks, you know, whenever you flex your muscles in the mirror, you are um, engaging in what I call pussy envy. You are being a woman because you are trying to receive. Okay, a woman is a receptor. A man is somebody who instigates, he permeates, he penetrates. Okay. What you're doing is you are trying to achieve sexual pleasure through the, the wrong directionality. And it can take some time to unlink and unhook your brain off this. A lot of guys who are in pain, who have deep masculine pain, they associate sexual ple pleasure with inward, inward, an inward pull and receiving. This is for a lot of reasons, but it comes down to mostly porn consumption and um, maybe guilt towards the mother, in my opinion. So what happens is men get a kind of misattribution of arousal. This means that your brain thinks that receiving sex is sexual pleasure, but the truth is, is that that directionality of receiving is on top of sexual pleasure. Sexual pleasure is here, and the directionality is here, but your brain can only see the directionality and you're convinced, you watch porn, you're receiving that, oh my God, it feels so good. And then you try to emulate that when you go out into the world and look all good and get your tokens. Be like, check out my money, my car, check out my body, I'm, I'm, you know, I've been really trying hard in the gym. And is my penis perfect? Oh, it's not? Oh, oh shit, fuck. Well, I can't have sexual pleasure. I cannot pass on my genes. But this is all an illusion, okay? So what you have to do is change the way you are achieving, loving, and having sexual pleasure to an outward flow. It's the man's penis that goes in the vagina, okay? The woman receives it. The woman receives the man's expression, okay? Uh, one famous saying uh, is you want to express, not impress. That might be from RSD. I'm not sure who started that, but it's a great, it's a great expression. It's a great phrase. Uh, you want to permeate, as David Data says in The Way of the Superior Man, you want to permeate the world, permeate, penetrate the woman, and penetrate the world as a man. And um, this, this, uh, this goes very deep, because this will scare you if you are not um, aware of it. When you think of enjoying sex in an outward way, where you are taking the woman, it, at first it will scare you, and you will think, I can't, I, I can't do that. And a lot of the times, you know, a guy will... Uh, get home a really bring home a really beautiful girl finally after years of being in the game he gets home a 10 out of 10 girl I'm like a model um, and then he, he notices he can't enjoy sex with her why is that it's because he's trying to receive her he's trying to receive her like a woman does okay but that is all wrong and the worst part is that when you are blind to it and you have that misattribution of arousal where you mix the directionality, you mix up the directionality for sexual pleasure. I mean, you, you're blind. You are blind at that moment. And guys will kill themselves because they are blind to this. 
they will believe so deeply that they must receive to feel good. They must receive sexual pleasure to feel good. They will believe it so blindly that they will kill themselves. And if their penis isn't perfect, if, you know, if their body isn't perfect, if a girl rejects them, they will blame it on something that they, you know, might lack. They lack some token. And uh, they cannot see out. And it's uh, really, really sad. It's really sad to me because there are ways to change this, but you have to believe in it. And you have to be willing to put in some work, not only action taking with talking to women, but there are mental exercises I can give you to unlink the directionality and relink the directionality to uh, an outward flow. So you want to, uh, you really need to focus on this. Realize you're blind to it and then start practicing. And uh, I'll make another video on, on some exercises I did and I still do to this day in order to um, embrace a more outward, outward flow and enjoy sex and enjoy the world in this outward flowing, outward love. Even women, and a lot of people try to love inwardly. They love people in a needing inward way. But we need to love outward. And it feels so wrong when you first do it that you think, this can't be love. I'm going to be punished for this. Oh, I'd rather die then. You know, I'd rather fucking stay at home and play video games. But um, there is a solution to this, I promise. Now, the last point I made earlier was kind of about how the penis and vagina aren't attractive by themselves. Um, this is very, very true. And I, I, I really want you to realize that even if your penis is bent, messed up, even jagged and hinging and aching because of pain Rooney's disease, or even if it's small or whatever, whatever's wrong with your penis, remember that what makes it sexy to the girl is always what makes you attractive as a man to her. So your, what, I, what I would consider to be a social permission or permission within the inner tribe in your mind or within the, within the group around you, how much permission do you have, okay? You don't have to have any tokens to have permission, all right? You just need to be positive. And then when the girl sees your penis, even if it's bent up, banged up, you know, you have her touch you very gently. And, you, have, you know, she'll, she'll love it. She'll love to, to, you know, give you oral sex and do anything you want. Because a girl really likes when a guy is satisfied sexually. Some girls really like to make guys come. Um... Some girls love to just get, you know, give a guy a hand job or like they want to see him come because they want him to be satisfied. A lot, I've noticed a lot of girls, um, this is very important to them. Girls want to orgasm too, but they want their guy to be satisfied. And a lot of girls think that for the guy to be satisfied, he needs to penetrate and be rough and blah, blah, blah. But once she sees that you are in absolute sexual bliss and you are enjoying sex and you are literally, it's like you're in heaven. When I have sex with, with girls, um, it's like I'm in heaven and they know that, they can see that. And they're, it's so fun for them. They're like, wow, I'm making this guy so happy. Uh, I, had, I had sex with you know, the most beautiful girl in my life, probably, um, not too long ago. And uh, you know, she, she was so happy to make my day. And you know, I had told her early on that I had Peyronie's and wasn't able to have sex in my 20s. And um, she found that to be endearing. Similarly, um, there was a girl who must have been 20 years old um, that uh, I approached at a bar. I sat next to her and I told her the first thing out of my mouth was, I can't have sex. My penis hurts. And she asked me to come. She, she asked if she could come home with me that night. She just asked me. She's like, can I come home with you tonight? And I'm just like, what? That doesn't make sense. It really threw me off. But um, it just goes to show the, the power of anti-tokens or the handicap principle. And um, the power of acceptance, you know, but I would say also sexual, when you have a handicap that's related to sexuality, when you, when you are able to surpass sexuality, what you're saying is I have permission to have sex with any woman in my tribe because I am that loved within the tribe. It's not power. Okay, power is not the most attractive thing to women. It's not because even if you're a tyrant, in your tribe and you have like, you got the weapons, you got the muscles. Um, you could be killed by other, but you could be, uh, you know, overthrown. So uh, tokens, although powerful, are liabilities, liabilities that can be faked. Flaws or handicaps or anti-tokens as I call them, they cannot be faked, at least not easily, 
uh, because you need to have a mo it's em it's emotional control that you must have in order to overcome these and pass these tests of your own. And it, um, the hum humans evolved to not be able to fake emotions. If you walk up to someone and smile and it's not real, they can see that because people evolved to not be able to fake emotions, okay? So you have to actually feel good in order to look like you feel good. And so you have to, you know, say, hey, I got Peyronie's, but I'm deciding to feel good, you know? And I'm, ex I'm deciding to give it a positive evaluation. And this will get on to uh, another point of mine and another theory of mine, um, which is that pos giving things positive evaluations is the highest, the highest level of game and success with women, okay? So other things like, you know, um, you know, there, there's, you know, that non-neediness and being honest and non, being non-judgmental, all these things are very powerful with women. But I think in a lot of ways, it all comes down to, are you willing to give things positive evaluations? Are, and, um, and that's why earlier I said I don't like to use the word framing because you could look at your, you know, messed up penis or look at your flaws and just try to frame it well and be like, oh, well, this aspect of it is good. And then you're like selling it. Positive evaluations are, are even deeper and better than that, in my opinion, because a positive evaluation is you deciding from your will that something is okay because you're going to make it okay. All right. And, um, you know, it's like, I notice that guys who are really attractive to women, sometimes they have a lot of younger brothers or sisters. And, you know, when you have a lot of younger brothers or sisters or any, and you see them crying when you're younger, you learn right away that you have to kind of make them feel better. You have to nurture them and kind of say, hey, it's okay. Don't worry. It's going to be all right. You know, you pick, you pick up your, your younger brother who's crying and you say, it's fine. We're going to do this. And you learn how to positively uphold things. You know, you don't disparage things. You know, if a toy breaks, you don't pick it up and whine and cry to your parents. You know, instead you learn because you see your younger brother or something, you know, crying at his broken toy. And you say, no, the toy's okay. The toy's okay. You know, it's broken, but it's going to be okay. And similarly, you know, if you were in a tribe and something bad happened to one of the tribe members or somebody died or like something had to be done, you would say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to decide that things are okay. I'm going to decide. And, and you could call this acceptance, but I feel like this it's a little bit deeper. I, I think it's about choosing to positively uphold and positively evaluate things and um, move forward. M maybe to you that is acceptance. Uh, but to me, acceptance has a kind of, um, you know, it sounds like it's kind of like, oh, well, it's terrible, but, you know, I'll just accept it. I have Peyronie's. Yep, got to accept it. No, I mean, you actually look at it and you choose not to disparage it. You say, no, this is good inherently because I decide that, okay? So a reason why, the reason why women really like this is because it has fatherly nature or fatherly essence in it. Uh, it sounds kind of weird. What do I mean by that? Okay, well, a woman wants a man who can be a father, who can positively uphold things, positively evaluate his children and other people. She wants somebody who will not disparage things or disparage people, right? So if you can tap into this and not be negative about things, um, you know, women will love you for that. Women are all about nurturing things, right? They like to nurture and raise up everything around them. They like variety. It's usually men who are always, you know, trying to tear things down and uh, criticize things. But uh, that is extremely unattractive to women. Um, you know, I used to have so many opinions about things. Like, you know, I like this music. I hate this music. I like this. I don't like that. That is an attempt at identity. And that's a very masculine thing because we are afraid to lose status within the tribe. So we say, this is who I am because I hate this. I like this. Therefore, I am special. Here I am. Hi, everybody. Trying to prove to them that you're okay in the tribe. But a real man with real permission within the tribe, he doesn't need to prove anything. Okay, so let go of your identity as any one solid thing. Um, you know, it's really, it's really wild um, how men try so hard to have identity just so they can pass on their genes, you know. Um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just crazy. And the way we, 
the way we cling to looks, the way we cling to tokens, like a perfectly straight penis and things, um, it is, you know, it's like, maybe you've, uh, if you've read the book Sexual Personae by Camille Paglia, or um, anything by Osho, or even by David Data, such as Enlightened Sex, uh, they, they talk a lot about the difference between male uh, men and women and how that changes their psychology. And um, women, you know, they are, they are w what I would consider to be complete. In sexual personae, Paglia talks about it as self-contained. And she talks about how men are battling against women's self-containment. Okay, Why women are complete is because their DNA and their genetic survival is guaranteed. And, and this is because n whoever they have sex with, they're guaranteed that their DNA passes on. It's always their child, okay? But a man does not have that guarantee. So a man wants to spread his seed everywhere, and he still doesn't have a guarantee no matter how many women he has sex with. So a man is fundamentally incomplete in this way. And that's why, according to Paglia and Sexual Personae, you know, we have society, we have art, we have music, we have all this stuff. And her view is very extreme. I understand that. But there's definitely some logic to this and some truth, some truth to this. You look at sports. What happens in sports? Men throw all shapes of balls in different sizes of holes. And, uh, you know, it's the same damn thing. They're, they are simulating completion, but they are never complete. And women are just, they're just kind of happy. They're okay with the way things are, you know, and it's only men who are grasping for tokens grasping for things to be complete because they're they say please we say please let me back in the tribe let me be valuable but women are already valuable they're like yeah i'm done with that they are they are what i would consider to be post complete women are totally post completion and they're just trying to enjoy things and so when they see you disparaging something like your penis or or even a crying child or anything you're criticizing something they're like what what is wrong with this guy what is wrong with him because who would do that in a tribe? You're all sitting around the fireplace and then one guy's like, oh, you know, this fireplace sucks. You know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It does not make any sense to criticize anything. Um, obviously, if something very bad is happening, you need to take action to change that and call it out, you know, in politics or whatever. But you don't complain about it because that's handing your power away to somebody else in the tribe, probably another man, okay? And the moment you do that, a girl's not going to fuck you. Okay, you need to do, you need to you do not need to be powerful to attract women, but you need to have a strong will to give positive evaluations to all things. All right. And there there's there are very deep reasons for this that I kind of outlined here. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that covers most of it. But, um, you know, I, I know how hard it is. It, it's it's crazy, and it's so hard to believe that there's kind of a, a way out of this, and um, you do get attached, and um, you get attached to the directionality. As I said, you want to receive, but um, you must change your brain. You must try to stop this because someday, if you put in the work, you will have sex in a different way, and it will actually feel better than it did before. But you just can't see it yet. You just can't see it. So a lot of what I consider to be helpful for men in success with women is to come to terms with their, their so-called incompletion. Come to terms with the fact that you are the one who gives yourself permission within the tribe around you. And you are the one to open the woman to sexual pleasure and to determine to her, to determine for her and for you what feels good sexually. You can do this. I'll make another video on exercises I have, or I can make more videos on just any of the stuff I'm talking about here, permission, anti-tokens, positive evaluations, examples. I have lots of stories, lots of stories um, that may help you. But I'm going to stop this here, and um, let me know if it helped you, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.